Hi everyone, just before we get into the main part of the video, I wanted to remind you that the voting is still open to decide what we are going to spend our coffee fund on. I'm only leaving this open for another few days and then I'm going to count all the votes. So if you have ideas of something that you would like to see bought with our donations from our coffee fund page, head over to the video that was listed as we need to spend some money. I shall leave a link in the card, I shall leave a link in the description and I'll also stick it on the end card for you as well. This is your last chance to get your say as to where our money goes. Welcome to the Colour Cave everyone where we like to play with art stuff. Today's uh, the day of the scroller challenge and I would just like to first of all thank both Katara and Daria for pointing out the significance of the phrase paper tiger. When I am filming the unboxing videos I am very much doing it um, on the hoof shall we say or is it off the hoof? Off the, no off the cuff, on the hoof. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, while I was doing that and I was unboxing and I saw the prompt, I had an awareness in my head that it was probably some sort of phrase or, um, you know, idiom or something like that, but it wasn't one that I was familiar with. I did, however, go and Google it afterwards and uh, I learned something. So for those of you that don't know, the phrase paper tiger is used to describe something or someone who poses a supposed threat, but there's actually no substance behind it and will pose no challenge. And it was, it's apparently, an old Chinese phrase but it was sort of popularised by one of the Chinese chairmen who used it to describe his political opponents, particularly his US political opponents. So there you go, there's your history lesson for today. Um, finding that information out didn't actually it didn't help me decide what I was going to do with the prompt and uh, I kind of tweaked what I was doing a little bit just to sort of incorporate that that nod towards this Chinese phrase. So I'm going to go to top down view and uh, I can talk you through what I ended up doing for the prompt. I had great fun with this and uh, unfortunately the black paint pen, uh, they did say that the nibs were really hard wearing they're not that hard wearing. To be fair, I was probably quite rough on it and I think I've probably used the majority of the paint that was in that black marker. So uh, yeah, that's just uh, a little bit of extra information for you. So let's get going anyway and you can see what I did. Okie dokie, so here we go. First things first, with that lovely H pencil, I have decided to sketch out my idea. So the original ideas I had were to either do something along the lines of an origami tiger, you know, like a folded paper kind of job and just do like a face. And my other thought was to have a tiger leaping out of a book. After my revelation about the phrase paper tiger, I decided to try and incorporate some sort of Chinese culture to the picture and I don't know how many of you have seen the little dog statues you get. I think they're called Foo Dogs, F-O-O -O or F-F-U. Um, anyway, they are, I think they're supposed to be protectors or some, anyway, they have some sort of significance and they've usually got something under one of their front feet. If anybody wants to enlighten me on the significance or symbolism of those, please feel free in the comments. So what I have here is a foo dog, but it is in fact a tiger. And thinking back to the paper aspect of it, I decided that he should be jauntily leaning on a pile of books. The reason that that kind of came into my head was actually that turquoise colour. I have seen a lot of those statues and in fact a lot of other um, Chinese inspired statues that have this lovely sort of turquoisey glaze to them and that was really what prompted the idea to sort of come to fruition if you like. At this stage I was kind of at the ugly stage and I'm looking at it and thinking it looks kind of like a like a man with a mask on. Kind of reminds me of that character from Tekken. Anyway, that's another story <laughs> entirely. So I was just making sure that my stacks of books looked uh, sort of in proportion and things. And then I had that nasty crumple in the paper, which is every artist's nightmare. I figured though, by the time I was finished with the paint pens, that crease probably wasn't going to be at the forefront of my problems. So uh, I could have used the other sheet of paper, but the other one that came in the box was actually kind of bumped at the edges. 
and um, I just thought, oh, what the hey, I've, I've gone this far, I might as well keep going. I redrew that front left leg about 16 times over the course of this video. I just couldn't seem to get it to, to sit right. And because the other four paw is foreshortened, it made it look even more out of place. So I kind of struggled with that a little bit. Aside from that though, the, this sketching stage actually went okay. I've drawn big cats before, I'm sure some of you have seen some of my videos, and uh, so it, it's quite a familiar, a sort of familiar territory to me. So uh, yeah, it didn't really pose any major problems. So the first thing I did was I wanted it to pop off the page, so I cracked open the black paint pen and just gave it an outline to see what that was going to look like and uh, just hopefully make it stand out a bit against the, the white of the paper. By making that line thicker, all I've done is accentuate that fact, which I thought was a pretty good starting point. Now, because I'm using paint pens, I knew it was going to be quite a, a sort of flat, more illustrative style that I was doing. So that's something that I quite often incorporate into those kind of drawings is to have some sort of outline on them. So gold for the stripes, which uh, I thought was quite fetching myself. So I was just kind of taking my time and working my way around each section. Now you'll notice that I do turn the paper a lot in this as well. I try not to do that normally in my videos because it can be very disorientating if you're watching. Um, but it was just so that I didn't stick my hand in any of the areas that were wet. And that's why I'm jumping back and forth from different sections of the picture. So here's another sort of characteristic of these little food dogs. They've got this sort of curly hair or mane. Um, quite a lot of them have that. So I thought that'd be a good idea to pop that in with our tiger as well. One thing I will say about the chrome pen, which I, by the way, am absolutely in love with. I realised that when the description told us that on non-porous surfaces, um, you know, it would work on that too. I realised that the the sort of shininess of it was going to change depending on whether it was put onto the paper, which obviously is going to absorb the pen, or whether or not it was put on top of the other paint. Because having that layer of paint makes the surface slightly less porous. So I actually, in hindsight, wish that I had gone over all the areas that I was going to do with the chrome pen in black paint first and let it dry and then put the chrome pen on top of it because when I tried it out afterwards, the, uh, there's quite a stark difference and it is much, much, much shinier when it sits on top of other paint. So there's a handy hint for you if you haven't done your scroller challenge yet. That works really well and it just makes it super shiny. Not that it wasn't shiny to begin with, but it makes it shiny. Or, 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 or. So I used the silver to sort of break up parts of the body of my tiger, uh, just to give a bit of differentiation between those front legs and down a little bit of the, the hair on their chest. Because if you look at tigers, um, real life tigers, they tend to have much paler fur down their chest and, and their bellies. So because we're on a limited palette, I didn't really want to try and incorporate that, but just sort of nod towards it, the fact that I'd acknowledge that they normally have different colored hairy bits there. In the mouth, that was another area where the limited palette kind of challenged me because I could have done with like pink for a tongue and it would make the teeth stand out. And at this stage, I wasn't very happy with it because the teeth are just lost. And that's kind of one of the main characteristics that helps you identify that it's a big cat and not, not a stripy teddy bear. So I was kind of pondering that as I was going through here and filling in some of these other sections. This turquoise paint pen is gorgeous, by the way. I just love the colour. So it wasn't happy with the outline, wasn't really happy that the picture was doing anything. So I decided just to go for it and decimate this poor black paint pen. The image I felt would pop out much better with a layer of black behind it. And this goes back to me thinking at the beginning that I actually wanted to do this in black paper, but in the spirit of sticking to the scroller challenge, I wanted to use the paper that came in the box. Which brings me to my next point. Scroller box don't seem to be very good at matching up paper with the items that they've got. There is nothing wrong with this paper, but in these heavy areas where I'm filling in the black, the paper started to struggle with the paint. I think we could have done with a slightly thicker paper, you know, more sort of cardstock thickness. Although the quality of the paper is very good, I just don't think it was 
designed with that kind of abuse from a paint pen in mind. So here I fixed the teeth, I just decided to outline them in black and as you can see they've popped out reasonably nicely. And uh, just starting to put a bit of definition on my stack of books here. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was kind of coming together at this point. And I knew I'd have to put colour in these books but I wanted them to stand out from our tiger friend here. So that's why I went for this sort of um, hatching type colouring rather than filling them in solidly. I think if they had been solid they, they would just have sort of blended into the tiger which is really what I, I didn't want. White pen was great for whiskers, that was that was excellent and that was my probably my favourite thing about this ent <laughs> entire drawing and getting that effect of the kind of furry outline with negative space again just using that black pen. So here I'm popping a little pattern around the outside and again this is a, a nod to a more sort of traditional Chinese pattern because I wanted to keep that feel and I think it just helps finish off that background quite nicely without being uh, intrusive. I also thought it would be really cool if I looked up my name in Chinese characters and I looked up the word gem as in precious stone because that's what my name means and there was about a gajillion different ways to do it. So this is uh, this is, a, they've called it a simplified Cantonese for treasure or gem. So that is my name in Chinese characters, the date. And then I just went back and filled in a few bits and bobs just to finish off. And uh, yeah, I was quite happy with that. So I would love to know what you think of this, whether I've done a good job or not. And uh, if anybody else has any other comments, please feel free to leave them below. You know I love to hear from you. And I hope you have enjoyed watching very much. We shall see you back in the cave soon for another video. Thanks again for watching, guys. Have a good day. Bye for now.